So tell us more about your GSOC journey. Like how did you start to apply and you know, contributions, tech stacks, Sikha Khan, all that. So actually, I, I got to know about GSOC in around my first year by watching some videos about you, like you are explaining your documentation, uh, like uh, explaining a, you released that video at that time and uh, about GSOC. And then I learned about like it's a great opportunity for tier three colleges uh, for, our, for uh, students like us who are in tier three. So that's where I know about the GSOC and uh, about the org, like I saw the, your latest video about that. So you told about some organizations to contribute. So I first I started contributing to Palicia Does and the maintainer was so strict at there. So <laughs> so he told me about like uh, you miss this, this thing. So, so then I started contributing to Jason's schema and the maintainer wasn't that much active. So at that time I made a two, three PRs and they were like they were uh, like uh, no one is checking them so i thought uh, i was parallelly uh, searching for other rocks mm. then you know my friend raj and we both contributing to os so so he told me about he already contributed a lot of there so he told me join our org and contribute uh, at least the maintainer is active there so i thought uh, maybe uh, i thought maybe i will contribute there and then show the proof of work to other rocks and then show then tell them to select me and then uh, after some time i think we made a, a lot of huge, a lot of prs like uh, 40 plus prs we both made so i think we were uh, pretty much confident in that all that we will be selected in this one so i didn't able i didn't try to shift in other i just uh, pro, uh, draft draft a proposal and submitted to the uh, mentor and he he told me told me that he was he was not being partial so he didn't uh, show any signs that you uh, you will be you will be entering in gsoc but yeah unfortunately uh, i will be i i am in the gsoc got it <laughs> very cool so the way live stream you two of you were there you were saying same project we are roommates flatmates something like that yeah yeah same same I mean, uh, different rooms i told <laughs> i told it before <laughs> got it very cool uh sahi hai bhai so 40 prs i th- think you sh- took us through some of your prs that day right yeah, yeah. some of them uh, some of them we but we both worked together like migrating from react to next js and uh, right. uh, type sense algolia to type sense like makes sense that sounds super interesting bhai uh, what advice do you have t- for other people who want to join one is get a friend who you can contribute to what else no i think uh, just hard work because if if you choose any uh, if you choose a, a, any library any any of the repository just contribute to it. Don't think about the outcome. Just contribute. Literally, I am the hardworking. I am. I am consider myself as a hardworking student because I, I whenever I choose anything, like I will contribute a lot in into it. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is the like I joined in January, and from January to February, March, I I, I had made already like 25 plus PR at that time. So wow. it was a huge impact in the a huge impact on the maintainer. He told mm-hmm. me like and and also one more th- story I want to share. Actually, uh, my my I met my GitHub got di- suspended at that time. What? Uh, somehow, yeah, because I I was raising a discussion and uh, after raising the discussion, uh, my G- my GitHub ID got dis- uh, suspended. So oh. <laughs> maintainer okay. thought it was some uh, it was uh, it was some bug. So I told him about the bug and after that I made two accounts and they both got dis- suspended because of raising that discussion. So it was something GitHub is flagging my discussion. After that about one week or later one week uh, my GitHub account back and then I, start, I, I started contributing a lot and mm. then I made uh, around 200 plus points in the repository. Oh crazy. That's amazing dude. Oh yeah you have points I remember you guys showed me. Yeah. yeah. Say, yeah. We have cool. estimated points. <laughs> Very cool. So yeah, and what are your plans after GSOC now? Uh, actually, I, uh, sir, uh, about the Super 30, I want to join Super 30 because I, I, I am in year 3 college, so we don't have that much community, uh, like open source community that I wanted. So right. I want to join uh, Super 30 and uh, get the community together and learn from them and uh, of course be in friendly, uh, friendly uh, competition. Array, very nice. Huh? Perfect. Do you want a hostel or not? Like uh, I want hostel uh, because uh, it, there uh, we were. We, I am with the folks, and then we will learn together. Okay, sounds good. Cool man. I will share it with you. In that group, which is our hostel, so you might have to pay for the hostel. Yeah, but, yeah. All right. Cool man. So Thank all the best. Milte Thank you, sir. Actually, I was actually very time since sir, I have to meet you. I plan that, but yes, sir. मतलब कोहट टू जब मैं देखता था तो हमेशा मैंने आज तक कभी कमेंट नहीं किया कभी भी आपकी उस पे क्योंकि मतलब I was afraid of something. So, I mean, after a few days, I wanted to meet you at this point, and I wanted to meet you at this point. 
थैंक यू सो मच सर आपके आप में, आपने मेरी जर्नी में बहुत हेल्प की मतलब बीइंग इन टीयर थ्री कॉलेज लिटरली इज वेरी हार्ड मतलब आपको कोई रिकॉग्निशन नहीं मिलती कुछ भी नहीं मिलता एंड देन यू गाइडेड थैंक यू सर thank you nice see you bhai thank you so much and all the best hi everyone in this video we have anas anas has been selected in gsoc and his organization is google deep mind and in this video we will get to know about his journey when did he start coding what was his journey like everything all around it so anas welcome to the pod hello thank you for having me uh so hi everyone i am anas khan i am from thadumal sahani engineering college mumbai and i have been shortlisted my proposal has been shortlisted in google deep mind for gsoc 2025 so anas where are you from and what are you studying and how you got into coding can you let us know about that yeah so i am from mumbai and uh, uh i have been coding ever since uh, the covid lockdown period so i got to know about this uh, awesome course by harvard it's called a cs50 which i took and that ignited a lot of coding principles and curiosity within me since then i have been actively coding also i've been in part of a lot of college and non uh, college and other tech communities which gave me a lot of exposure to these various coding programs just like gsoc before getting into gsoc what was your coding journey like uh, did you face any major uh, setbacks or breakthrough like i was already coding from my pre first year so i had a lot of my basics sorted then i shift to different programming languages uh i i went ahead with python and started doing back end development from my second year onwards to get internships i could get one on campus internship but i've been i was struggling for a really long time to get uh, internships so instead i tried to build up my proof of work and that's how my journey has been all this while right now i'm code uh, language agnostic so i can do golang or ruby or python or even javascript for that matter How did you first hear about GSoC and uh, what made you want to apply there? Funnily enough, uh, I was following her Kritz channel uh, during my JE days, the viral uh, four minutes of IITs in ah. four four years and four minutes video. So that probably that's when I got to know about GSoC and the program uh, Google gives a stipend and you contribute to open source. That's when I knew. I did not actively take part in it in my college in the first two years. In third year, I was busy with my internship, so I couldn't. really given time and right now i'm in my final year so i started applying for it uh, i started uh, finding the organization and looking for it since last uh, probably november november or before october november period uh, that's when i was uh, contributing to an organization called as open climate fix that organization was working to working towards something really cool which i thought was very interesting uh, i wanted to uh, contribute to something which was meaningful and they were trying to solve the world's heat uh, global warming problem with uh, uh, with science and machine learning later uh, all of all of my peers got merged but later in the meetings i realized that they were looking for only ml engineers of phd or masters level so i had to search organizations then i went ahead trying to apply for a different a few different organizations uh, i was trying to see if ulama is coming so i contributed there and then i could see circuit wars is coming and because of my tech stack i could try there uh unfortunately the circuit was proposal which i gave that project did not got get shortlisted but i had a backup uh, uh, so deepmind was the fir- uh, coming for the first time so just as a backup i uh, already had experience a lot of in tinkering with llms and fine tuning models so i decided to also give it a shot give some of my ideas and suggestions in what was required for the proposal and turns out they they liked it and they shortlisted since deepmind is a competitive organization i guess and there are many people contributing to it how did you approach choosing the project and writing the proposal any tips for the student who are interested okay so deepmind is competitive true but deepmind was the first of its kind to ever come to gsoc we got to know about it on the very last day of announcement and uh, uh, nobody was sure of how do we even contribute because their repositories are located on all different places there's yeah. google gen ai there's google python and deepmind so uh, they were not looking for a lot of contribution rather they were looking for the idea of implementation you wanted to do or how you could expand the scope so my suggestion would be try to read all the ideas that they have and try to show show proof of work in what what whatever tech that they are trying to work on so uh, just like sad got in uh, because his contributions was in llama index and other places i got in because i have been tinkering around with llms for quite a long time and i had some experience uh, in my internship as well as in my research paper 
which helped me get the project which i was aiming for so i extreme i detailed it extremely well and i also made sure that i was the right fit for what they were looking for i think there are certain people from the cohort itself that have been gotten into deep mind there was amrit uh, who got yeah. who has been selected on based on his previous proposal i think and uh, there were solid projects backing his proposal can you walk us through the interaction of you and your mentors during the selection process uh no so as i said deep mind did not uh, actively uh, take in people for the uh discussion so it was all our research and our previous work which stood out in our applications what is the project you are working on deep mind so my project in google deep mind is uh, multi model llm benchmarking so as google has been constantly releasing a lot of uh, models this gemini 2.5 pro flash and all the other ones coming out it's becoming quite difficult to evaluate them uh, and the the benchmarking tools that we have are again quite old and not leveraging the multimodal capabilities of the models that's why i try to take up a small portion of creating uh, an llm benchmarking a new benchmark which also incorporates their uh, vision capabilities and also their front end uh, capabilities was the project challenging uh, to understand at first how did you bridge that i mean the research which went into this was quite a lot because you had to read a lot of academic papers and uh, uh, how was the level of significance you would want to have and all the other details what are the existing benchmarks out there and why why are there certain companies favoring these and what's a good coding benchmark so that was i think the more critical part of trying to uh, create this proposal so what is your goal look like uh, are you interested in ai research or in general or since so i mostly do back end but yeah. i also enjoy a lot of problem solving so gen ai just enables me to make those better decisions or like make those products better so i'm interested in L, uh, back end and uh, gen ai since you are from a tier 3 college and do you have a coding community around you who is doing open source right now how do you motivate yourself to keep doing something like this uh so my college does have good coding communities uh but uh, uh they are mostly into uh organizing hackathons i was also part of one i also organized one of the biggest hackathon in mumbai uh but uh, that being said open source culture is quite absent frankly speaking i tried to initiate one but it did not go well because uh people were more interested towards going for masters or setting for placements but this is a tradition this is not a traditional path which people are willing to take uh the last gsoc from my college was probably like 4 years ago so that's 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 that's, you, that's how you know like open source culture is quite dead at our college what do you recommend to someone who is uh, willing to contribute to deep mind for gsoc next year uh for gsoc next year i would say to start early and uh, i mean you have three shots at applying to an organization i got in gsoc not because of the previous contributions because they weren't taking any rather based on my research work and other uh, proof of work so you should probably try to have another backup organization my application with circus circuit was did not go well because the project did not got shortlisted but there were new organization deep mind was a new organization and i try to put in a lot of research into making that application so you can probably explore another field or another organization and then try for it and also it's very good to reach out to your mentors beforehand if you can uh, that will give you a better understanding of what is required for the project and you can already align on the duration and the uh, scope of the project that is quite essential Uh, so what do you think what is the biggest technical skills or experience that you have got through this experience of this whole selection process of gsoc i would say it's research and communication even more than your technical skills at this point you would need to show that you are active in the community you need to collaborate and communicate well your ideas as well as you need to research like think before you speak and research before you type so that you are able to articulate what they are looking for because you see like there were 20 like uh, i think 100000 folks who applied for gsoc this year registered for this year yeah. so there's a lot of spam that's going around you need to make sure that you're not spamming people you're not asking the, them stupid questions you ha- you you know what it is there uh, you have done your research and then you are reaching out to them talking about the code and the architecture and how you would want to implement certain things what are your future goals look like and where do you see yourself after 5 years uh, genai is already a very rapidly evolving field 
and i feel like uh, that's a place where i'd like to be uh, i previously interned like at two yc startups so i feel like working in a startup would be great and the company where i'm working at right now uh, already is one of the is using gen ai to its maximum potential and i feel like there i can get to learn more what, as well as what what company is it if if you, if you can name it uh, i'm working at hacker rank as an okay. intern so we are already leveraging uh, llms and gen ai to yeah. its good potential and i feel like working there and any tech company which has llms to its co- uh, gen ai to its core can can be a very rewarding and lo- enriching experience for me thank you anas for joining and for everyone uh, we will see you in the next part bye bye thank you